Hello everyone, this is Mutant and Nuts. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we'll be continuing the OAS Top 10 2021 video series. The first two risks I've already covered in the previous videos. I'll also explain more about OAS in the first video. You all can go and check that out. So today we'll be looking at the third risk that is injection. So in 2017, injection was an A01 that was first, and now it's come down to the third position in 2021. And cross-site scripting from 2017, uh, A07 is merged now to A03 injection. So that's what it is. So let's just get started. So what is injection? Injection is nothing but injecting or adding malicious or unsafe code, query, script, commands. And these things are added usually in the input fields of the web application, the text boxes, which are seen. And also, obviously, these uh, values uh, go and go to the parameters. So then there are other parameters which are hidden. And when it's not visible on the screen or something, but whenever the web request is sent, these parameters are added. So it can be, uh, you know, injection can take place over there as well. And also on the headers. So these things happen because of lack of input validation. So there is no input validation, whichever data is sent from the client, whatever data is sent. So that is actually not validated by the server and it just processes that data. So if it is an unsafe data, it will just go ahead and process it. So that's why different types of attacks occur. And it's on number three in 2021. So let's look at the common injection attacks, not going into detail, just a high level overview. First thing is SQL injection. Here there are SQL queries which are injected. The server will not perform any validation or something. And later on the database will execute those queries and send the response back. And uh, the user can gather multiple sensitive information, modify contents and so on. Then comes OS command injection. Your OS commands are injected, which are, you know, executed uh, in CMD, like the command line or bash. The server may have some functionality or something, and it can execute those commands. And eventually there can be a reverse shell obtained and then comes cross site scripting. So basically here again, there are some scripts which are injected and then they are later executed on the client side, which can lead to multiple things. Then comes LDAP injection. That is LDAP is nothing but lightweight directory access protocol. This is used in Active Directory and in corporate environments. So over here, again, same thing. Uh, there are some LDAP queries which are injected and additional sensitive information can be retrieved and so on. So obviously there are many more injection attacks, but these are the ones which are common. And then let's look at some of the examples over here. And uh, the, these things are only for educational purpose, just a very simple example to understand this entire thing of OS command injection. So first thing, there is a user named Alice and there is a server which is hosting a DNS lookup web application. And the host name of the server, as we can see over here, is dummy server123. So that's the host name which will be important in, you know, getting to know more. Like further, once we complete this uh, example, we'll get to know why that is important, the host name. So Alice uh, will actually wants to actually get a lookup done for one of the domains over here. That is dummydomain.com and she sends a request to the web application server. The web application server will process this request without any problem and it will send the IP. I can understand this domain is a dummy domain. IP is also an internal IP, just for example, just to keep it simple, I've uh, mentioned that. So it will send this, Alice is happy, okay. It gets the information and everything. So now what Alice will do is, the dummy domain which is present along with that allies will also enter some malicious commands that is an and host name over here because she suspects that this may be vulnerable to os command injection so she adds this command over here in red which we can see along with the domain name oh and then the server will actually execute that particular command because first it does a 
you know the lookup on that particular domain first and then later on it also execute the second command which is the host name command on the server so the server's host name is dummy server 123 so that command was executed on the server and it sent the response back to allies as we can see below so basically there was os command injection successful over here and because were, the server did not you know perform any input validation or something of that sort so now let's look at this in a better way so there's a free dns lookup tool which we saw like earlier that dns lookup server and it's saying enter domain ip below so the do domain is entered over dummy domain.com and it says click to search and post that the lookup results are received from the server that is 10 10 10 10 so now this is done this is the ideal way it should work and then later on there is a malicious data entered over here in the input field now this again is an injection of data right that's why this risk is also injection you're adding something or you're injecting some additional contents over here so we are adding and and to you know execute another command that is hostname command which can be executed on the command line or also the bash uh, terminal so basically again click to search is done by the user allies and then later on the lookup results come over here that is the first lookup that dummy domain lookup is done and then the hostname command is executed and the result dummy server 123 is received uh, over here so that means os command injection is successful due to lack of input validation and so on so next thing is over here we do have injection uh, that is the LDAP injection present and we do have a user Bob over here and we do have a server web application server which is connected to LDAP at the back end obviously there'll be multiple things involved over there but just to keep it simple we are just uh, have two Bob, people over here two parties involved client and the server and the later on Bob tries to gather information about user allies okay uh, like because a web application will let you actually get additional details about the user so they are part of the same organization bob and allies so he enters allies over there and the server will then send the details of the user allies now bob is curious over here and he wants to ensure that um or he wants to understand if the ldap service if the web application server is vulnerable to ldap or not so he just sends this wildcard away of the asterisk and later on he sends this and he expects and sees like you know he tries to gather and check uh, if the ldap server returns any additional data or not or basically the web application server returns any data or not so the web application server over here sends all the details like all the user details to bob because of the asterisk because the wildcard so that means it is prone to ldap injection obviously there are multiple more ldap queries which can be added over here but just to keep it simple this was one of the case and if we have to see it in a better way over here first the user bob will enter allies and it will just click to search for this and then later on the server will send some details like the user id name type and the team which the user allies belongs to so this is the actual intended way which has to be done and the server is restricted it will if you only have the right username probably so that's when the server will send this particular data or it will say no match found or something of that sort so bob sends uh, this asterisk now okay and then later on he does click to search where he is injecting something again he's injecting some malicious command so in our lab this is a wildcard so which can be injected over here he tries to inject it in this text input field and then later on once he gets the response from the server he gets the search results for all the employees in the organization this organization is very small just three employees over here so there is allies bob and dart so all the employee information he gathers over here because of this wildcard and because the server did not have any proper input validation and other security controls in place so that's the reason this was possible there's no escaping of characters and so on 
so that way uh, the LDAP injection is successful over here and this was all about injection just a short uh, overview on what injection is if you guys like the video do give a thumbs up if you all have any queries please do ask me in the comment section below uh, do subscribe for more upcoming videos thank you and have a nice day take care